Hey guys, welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you a few of my must-have lists to stay on top of all of the things that we have to stay on top of. Let's get started. Okay, now I will be dividing this up into two sections because I have my own personal group of lists and then my homeschool group of lists. So um, the homeschool stuff will come at the end because it won't apply to everybody because most of us are either back in school or doing distance learning. Not everybody is doing homeschool. And homeschool is a whole different game from distance learning. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with kind of the everyday lists that are more than just your basic to-dos. So uh, the first thing that I like to keep track of is um, my, I call it my been meaning to get to it list. This is all of those tiny little things to where you're, you know, when you're walking around your house, you got a basket of laundry and then you see something across the room. I need to get to that. I write those down. And that way when I have free time or I'm like, you know, when you're feeling productive and you're looking for something to do and like your mind goes blank, this is where this list comes in handy. Uh, for instance, I have a handle on my oldest son, his dresser, it's loose. I know I need to grab a screwdriver and get in there. Um, one of the uh, screws on my bed frame is a little bit loose. It's not crazy loose, but I have to get an Allen wrench to fix it. That's on my list, things like that. So I like to keep track of that. My next list is items or products that I want to try. Uh, I have routinely done hauls where I, where I want to try a product. I'm kind of a beauty junkie, skincare, hair care, makeup. I want to try it all. So I kind of keep track of stuff like that. But I also um, do that with uh, like games for my kids or places to go, things that I want to try. I keep track of all of that and that way um, you know, I don't stumble across it years later having never tried it and like, where has this been all my life? Because we've all had that experience where we have tried something that we have seen for years and it revolutionizes everything. So I keep track of that as well. The next one is one of my favorite lists. And this one isn't necessarily to help me stay organized or on top of things, but it's just basically just to kind of enrich my life. And it is things I want to know. That's what I call it, my things I want to know list. Random stuff that I kind of want to look into. I'm a huge student of history. Um, I love doing kind of research like that on stuff that I've always been curious about, but kind of forget, again, your mind goes blank and you forget to get to it when you are kind of in the mood, like, hmm, what do I want to look up? Uh, I don't know if that's just like a big nerdy thing that I have or if other people are like that, but I think that other people are, are like that. I think that most of us find uh, certain things interesting when we stumble across them. And I just have a big old list of stuff. <laughs> this is probably one of the larger lists that I have and just um, kind of a, a few things that I have on here, um, uh, like folklore in general, um, the Archduke Ferdinand. Now, he famously, his assassination famously kind of started World War I uh, back in the early 20th. I don't know much about it. I just know that, you know, that it kind of precipitated things. Uh, but I don't know what he did, who he was, basically. I think that would be really, really interesting to learn about. Agrippina the Younger, she was Caligula's sister. Um, Catherine of Aragon, she was the first wife of Henry VIII. Very curious about her. Um, oh, um, Jane of Jamestown. Oh, her story. Okay. Jane of Jamestown, they actually, you can actually Google her and see a reconstruction of her features because they have her skull, they have her femur, and I think a couple of other bones that they've excavated out of Jamestown, the original settlement, um, in, here in the United States, uh, back when we were just a colony. And she's beautiful, by the way. I want to say she was like 14 or 16. She was a teenager and she is the first concrete evidence of cannibalism in the colonies due to starvation. And it's pretty like it's pretty gruesome, but it's very, very interesting. And 
the more that I can know about that subject, the better. Um, but things like the Tet Offensive, um, Hollywood film history, I'm very interested in. Uh, there's, I don't know if this is true, which is why it's on this list, so I can look up uh, that the there was a clan in Scotland that inspired The Hills Have Eyes, the original Wes Craven back in the day, which was filmed not too far from where I live, actually, um, called The Bean Clan. And their sordid, gruesome history. That would be very interesting. Uh, but things like that, that's the kind of stuff that interests me. I write them down so that when I have a little bit of free time, hmm, what can I look up? And it just, it makes me happy. It's really, really cool and interesting. And just, you know, it just, it, again, it enriches my life. And I think that it's really important for us to kind of always stay curious. And this kind of helps me to do that. <sighs> this one comes in handy for when we are just not doing that great. Um, as many of you know, I have um, <laughs> kind of had a tough couple of months, uh, a lot of changes, most of them not good, um, a couple of deaths, the pandemic is a bitch um, in my family, and it's important to take care of yourself when, when you are experiencing that. And a lot of people are experiencing it. I mean, I remember back, you know, at the beginning when I did, um, they did like a COVID or like a pandemic tag that I did. Somebody, I can't remember who tagged me, but I did one. And they asked, did you know anybody who has tested positive? And at the time, no. And now I know a ton of people. And unfortunately, two of my own family members have died from it. And I know that I'm not the only one. So it's important to take care of ourselves and kind of, you know, it's one of those things where you can't avoid it. You just got to go through it. And there are things that help each of us individually. It's very individual. It's very individualistic, um, even on what gets us through those times. And I have a list of stuff that helps me that I can kind of go to and reference and remind myself, oh yeah, this kind of helps me. And, you know, whether it be like meditation, for me, phys like physical, physical activity, um, mainly in the form of like hardcore yoga to where you're like doing a bunch of planks for, you know, minutes on end, it really gets your heart rate up, that kind of stuff, just that physical exertion helps me um, listening to podcasts to go to sleep, relaxing podcasts. Those are the kinds of things that help me because when I'm upset, um, I tend to have an insomnia. So I keep track of stuff like that and even stuff to look into that may be of help to me so that I can take care of myself because I think it's so important to be really proactive um, so that you don't take a bad turn. So that is definitely an integral list that I think everyone should have. My last list is one that I got actually from... Um, Rachel Hollis, if you are not familiar with her, I will link her website down below. Um, I've read, I think I've read all of her nonfiction books. I've never read any of her fiction stuff, but it does look cute, I will say. Um, but she made this particular list and it is basically, she calls it her joys list. And I have mine and it's basically just little, little or big things really that make you happy. So for me personally, I have on here, I have candlelight. I love candlelight. Um, Arnold Palmer's, um, if you are not familiar with mixing iced tea and lemonade, do it, it's delicious. Um, Huga, hot buttered toast, um, the Libby app, which is a library app that I use on my phone to connect to my local branch. Um, getting out of the house. Um, my husband and children, when they're in their PJs and they have kind of like messy morning hair, I love that. That just like fills my heart. It really does. Um, California Sunsets, uh, the Ramona Quimbia series, Giant Sequoias, like how ra that one's random, but if you've ever been to Sequoia National Park, you kind of know how amazing it is to be there. Um, Lash Paradise Mascara, just random things that kind of make me happy. So um, I like keeping track of that as well. That again, that one was not mine. That was from Rachel Hollis. And I think it's a good one for everyone to have. 
The next set of lists I'm just going to go over really quickly because again they don't really apply to everybody. It's basically just for homeschoolers. But I thought it'd be kind of nice to share. Um, I think most of us who homeschool uh, kind of are always looking to fine tune our routine, our rhythms, um, and um, making our children's education as awesome as possible. So I thought I'd share those. So um, this one specifically, this is my journal just for homeschool. And if you're interested, I got these notebooks at Target. They came in a bundle with a third one uh, that will replace this one when this is full. Um, and then I'll probably have to buy another one once this one is full as well. But uh, for homeschool, what I keep track of is um, our interest-led lessons. My son, my oldest, is like super curious about a lot of different things. Um, he's uh, He was asking about Braille, our family tree, uh, armadillos, just random things that he wants to know about. I am all for, hey, let's do a deep, a deep dive. So I keep track of that. Books we need to read. Uh, and uh, this is my, this is easily my longest and it ain't done yet. Um, I'd love to read obviously the Harry Potter series. I just, I want my youngest to be a little bit older. He like, he did great with the Ramona Quimby series, much better than I thought he would. He retained so much of that series. Um, but I want to wait until he's about like five or six before we start Harry Potter and also uh, the Percy Jackson series. Um, because my, uh, my nephew really loved those books, um, so I think it'd be really interesting to start those. But like Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, um, let's see, James and the Giant Peach, the Narnia series, all of those things are just a standing list of books that I really, really want to get to. We have a lot checked off that I wanted to introduce to my children, but I mean, the more the merrier. I also have one section each for each of my kids. My youngest, oh, he's only four. He just turned four. And I'm a big believer in play-based learning. So that's basically where we are with him. And then I have one for G. Again, um, I keep track of like what frustrates him and how best he learns. He learns really, really well when he's doing like movement. If we're like tossing a ball or banging on a xylophone. Um, I don't know, it just helps him retain stuff. So I keep track of that. I have a bucket list for our homeschool where all of the activities or places I'd like to do or visit, I keep track of them. And then the last thing I keep is just um, some general notes. I have some curriculum that I am interested in because I probably will be changing up from the Bob Jones if we do decide to do um, continue with homeschool. I found a couple that I wanted to keep track of, but any just general notes, even stuff that kind of like resources for myself to look into, like the Brave Rider, again, um, I will have that link down below um, if you are interested at all. Uh, but just basically stuff like that that I wanna keep tabs on, I put in my notes section. Well guys, that is basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some kind of inspiration or some good ideas on stuff that maybe you wanna keep track of. Uh, just to kind of, again, stay on top of things, be better organized, and live your best life, basically. <laughs> um, really, really quickly, I want to thank everybody for expressing their condolences. Everybody was just so kind. Special shout out to Kayla from the Modern, uh, the Unmodern Millennial. She is so kind. She reached out to me on Instagram um, a couple of days ago, and she left me a very sweet note, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, but all of you, thank you so much. It um, kind of warms the heart a little bit, I would say. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will see you all in the next video where I will continue with my struggle with decluttering. <laughs> Until then, take care. Bye for now.